This video is brought to you by Make It Simple TT. With the easiest registration available, all you have to do is fill out a form on our website and an automated email process will allow you to pay for your classes via credit or debit card, PayPal or local bank transfers. With same day processing within working hours, you'll be in your virtual classroom in less than an hour in some cases. To register, head over to our website at makeitsimplett.com forward slash register or you can WhatsApp one 308 8799 Last question, which is, again, another nice question that helps you analyze what you know and apply it to a scenario, which is what I love because this is what IT is good for. The payroll department of an organization stores information on employee salaries in a database. Salary amounts are then uploaded electronically to each employee's bank account. The payroll clerk enters data or searches for information on full-time or part-time employees. Okay, cool. Nice scenario. Good. We understand what is going on. State the job title given to the person who was responsible for ensuring the integrity and security of the database. Database administrator. Administrator is such a long word. Way. Where should I get us for database admin? <laughs> database analyst will not be correct because a database analyst not making sure integrity and security good. A database analyst checking to see how the database is moving efficiently. But the database administrator is the one that day to day checks to make sure that it's working properly. IT manager, whatnot. Yeah, if you put database admin, <laughs> I guess they should accept it too. Because administrator is a very long word. And administrator. And if you can't spell very well, and like me, and you're like, um, sometimes you're spelling a word and you're not too sure what's going on, and you reach to the halfway through the word and you're like, and then you read over the word like three times to be like, did I, did I spell administrator wrong? Mm, yeah. All right, software engineer and all that stuff, right? All right, so for each of the following scenarios, identify one type of computer misuse that is described and state whether an individual or a company is impacted. This straight from the syllabus, straight from the syllabus. I actually have a test that I created that uses this same thing because this is what they want you to know from the syllabus, right? Employees in the payroll department were unable to log in to upload the payroll file. So unable to log in that is a denial of service attack. DOS or denial of service. Because they couldn't log in. They, they can't log in. BIC, yeah. Service. Impact. Um the payroll. Well they want to they want to know what the impact is on the oh no state where there's an individual or the company is impacted. Okay. So this is the company. So the company is impacted because they can't pay people on time. An employee is caught emailing director's salaries to a competing company. That is industrial espionage. The company is impacted. Now, for this one here, the impact, you might want to think that the impact is the individual, which may be correct because the individuals won't get their payment on time. Um, so I would say individual. But I would also argue that company would be impacted because if the payrolls don't get put in on time, then um, the company could get sued or some kind of thing for not putting the salaries or whatnot. So once you have the word espionage for the second part, you're okay. Espionage is the key, is the key thing inside the industrial espionage is, is good enough. Don't fight it too much. Yeah, so the impact company or individual for the denial of service attack, mm, I don't know. I don't know. I would say I would say individual or or company. Um, if the employee is caught emailing the director's salaries, that one I think is company because the company will get in a it sending it to a competing company, so the company will be impacted. For you to infer that the person will get fired after because of it, that's going a little too far. That'll be going a little too far. Yeah. I guess. All right, the computer related personnel which use encryption to mitigate against interception. Explain how encryption protects data that has been transmitted. Wow, this question is so easy, I don't even want to write it down. Um, it scrambles the 
data and sends it to another computer that can that has the key to unscramble it. Right? I couldn't use encrypt and decrypt, I'll just be like unscramble line. That's also fine. That's that's good. That was an easy question. That's one of the few questions where they just ask you for a definition, you put the definition and you move on to your life. Ooh, this one. This one was this one required you to think a lot. And um I like it. Identify each of the following cyber threats for the given counter uh, methods in the table below. So a network security device that monitors and filters incoming and outgoing network traffic based on an organization's previously established security policies. This is our firewall, right? So you use our firewall to protect against what? Your, your firewall will protect you against um, denial of service attacks. It will, it will protect you against Trojans. It'll protect you against wounds. Um, yeah, Trojans and wounds are usually things that pass through firewalls and you have to block them. So, and denial of service, they will protect. A computer program used to prevent and detect removable malware. So this is an antivirus that you're talking about. So you had to put viruses here like viruses, malware. Worms could fall back inside here too. But we'll put worms. Because worms could fall into both categories. Um, and the cyber threat, your hackers could go inside it too. Because you could stop a hacker from coming in based on their IP address, something like that. Um, yeah, virus, malware, yeah. Um, I'm not too sure if spam is a cyber threat. You can't really write spam. Yeah. It'd be kind of weird to put spam. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, you shouldn't put malware inside here. Malware is not um you can't use malware if the question says malware. Viruses and wombs should be good. Or oh, bots, bots. Yeah, you can put bots instead. Yeah. That's it's good. Phishing attacks. Now firewall can't really stop a phishing attack. No. No, we wouldn't accept that either. Do, 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 do. Alright, I followed the following information for the payment of salaries was prepared for upload. Um, oh, right, so this is a database question. It was full, full, full paper one time we didn't get a database question. Now, did we get a database question? No, we didn't get a database question. Yeah, so database question is this. So they give you the table with the database. This is in data sheet view. And we want to start to pull out the information. So staff ID data type will be number. Full time will be um, in access is up yes slash no. Or you could say boolean. Boolean is making two, a choice between one or the other. Salary. Ah, the problem with this is they didn't put a dollar sign by the salary. So we can't put it as currency, so you have to put it as number. Because they don't have any dollar signs, you, will, you can't get currency. And I know that some of the effects right now. I know you're saying to yourself, but salary is currency. But yeah, look at the table. And the table has a... Um, the table does not have the dollar sign. So you have to put number. But you can't put integer because integer is not using databases for data types. So chances are it's late in the night and you're watching this past paper video hoping that you get the answers to the past paper that you've been looking for for all this time and you're happy that it actually exists on YouTube. Well, go leave it up to the YouTube algorithm to show you the rest of um, answers. I have an app that's called Learn It by Make It Simple TT and it has all the past paper answers in chronological order for the past 10 years, maybe 12, depending on the time that you're watching this video. It might have a lot more. The app is called Learn It. Go find it, download it, link will be in the description. And if you want to see the PDF with the actual crap of foot handwriting that I have with the answers, so you could actually scroll through the PDF and look at the answers as it was written. Instead of watching the video, hey, you could do that too. Download the app now. All right, back to the answers. To the file access method, which would be used to load the salary data from the file in the, the file access method, this is um sequential because you can see that it, it is sorted in numerical order 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That means it's sequential storage. It wouldn't be direct because it's payroll. Um, uh, payment of salaries, that's always done in sequential. 
Categorize each of the following activities in the table below as either input, processing, or output. Oh my. Oh my. After you answer this question, you just be like... Sometimes my genius is... It's almost frightening. Be like, ooh, calculate the salary. That is a process. Uh, all right, all right. Print salary slip. That is a output. Enter the staff ID. That is a input. And then you look at yourself in the mirror and you tell yourself, you smart. You very smart. <laughs> it's form two with my form two. Yeah. In writing an algorithm. With the information in D15 as input, state the field that can be used as criteria to determine employees who are part time. All right, so to determine employees who are part time, you have two things I can tell you. If they're not full time, obviously you're part time. So, full time for sure is the field I prefer first. But also the amount of hours they would, because they can clearly realize that the people who are not full time have particular hours. So, full time or hours? Um, full time. And hours. Those are the two fields that will let you know if our employee is part time or not. All right. If the algorithm mentioned in D part four was produced, state why staff ID would be the most suitable field to determine the field organization method used to read the file. So if the algorithm in part four was produced, state why staff ID would be the most suitable field to determine a field organization method. Because it cannot be duplicated or you could say it's a primary key if you say primary key that's a subtle flex to be like yo you could ask me something harder because i know about primary keys and you don't know about primary keys do you if you don't know about primary keys why don't you just ask me about primary keys you know yeah you're basically um when you when you write when you write primary key here and you flex on them you just be like um Is that why you're here? Because you know there are some students who drill databases, primary key, composite key, this key, this key, that key, all kind of key. And you're like, well, I don't even get the chance to write down primary key. No, I'm writing it for you here. This is our primary key. Yeah, you, that's you, if that's you, you're welcome. The examiner will smile. <laughs> but E, the following is a flowchart of an algorithm illustrating the steps used to upload employee salaries to their banks. So, right, as the flowchart starts, you set a value. While you're not at the end of the file, keep reading information. The only thing I didn't like about this is that they didn't put the yes or no. So if you're at the end of the file, you have yes, and then you should have no. They need that. All flowcharts must have that, right? For each um, statement in the following, state one example from the algorithm of initialization. Initialization is set number of records is equal to zero. Set num of records equal to zero. Right? Initialization is basically setting a value to a variable at the start. Right? Um, condition is be end of file, end of file. Question mark. Usually it's our question mark in a, in a diamond, but they didn't put a question mark, but you could put it, right? Please do that. Um, processing is anything that is in a rectangle that you do some sort of process. Usually addition and subtraction will be a process. So number of records is number of records plus one. So number of records equal to number of records plus one. And then output is this parallelogram here. Because it literally has the word output there. I mean, I mean, they kind of gain, they kind of gain a little ridiculous now. Like, oh yeah, well, the word output right there, like. Bombastic side eye. Criminal offensive side eye. That's a little too easy. I'm like, I mean, output. Please don't do that. Output number of records. Yeah. But that's four marks. You can't be leaving here without our four marks. I just saying, you can't, you cannot not get those four marks. Please, I beg of you, I beg of you. And this here, this question, kill off real people, real, real, real people. And I am, 
I'm glad that this question will separate the sheep from the goat because a lot of children don't understand what documentation is. There is internal documentation and then there's external documentation. Internal documentation is information I put inside the program to help the um, developers know what is taking place. External documentation is information that I give to the user to tell them how to use the program. And when you walk out of the exam room after you do this paper, you'll just be like... And that, my dear friends, is the end of the paper. And as I said before, this is the best paper that CXC has ever given for CSEC IT. Mm -hmm.